Kommt da ein Komma hin? Hello, English-speaking world, all the German learners, I greet you. In this video, we'll be looking at German comma rules. To correctly apply those rules, you need to know about main clauses, subclauses, and the infinitive with zu. There are three main reasons to put a comma in German. The most important rule is about separating clauses. If you start a new main or subclause, you need to mark it with a comma. If there is a conjunction, so a word connecting the clauses, the comma always comes before the conjunction. For example, Ich weiß nicht, warum sie keine Zeit hat. I don't know why she doesn't have time. Er ist Vegetarier, was ich nicht wusste. He's a vegetarian, which I didn't know. Sie hat das Video gesehen, das wir ihr geschickt haben, aber sie hat es nicht geteilt, weil es nicht interessant genug war. She saw the video that we've sent her, but she didn't share it because it wasn't interesting enough. The same thing applies for infinitives with two that are more than just a single verb. They are treated as if they were clauses. For example, Er geht nach Deutschland, um Deutsch zu lernen. He goes to Germany to learn German. Wir haben keine Zeit, eine Pause zu machen. We don't have time to have a break. Wir haben keine Zeit zu pausieren. We don't have time to pause. There is one exception. The conjunctions UND and ODER do not require a comma. For example, Ich habe ein Fahrrad und er hat ein Auto. I have a bicycle and he has a car. Sie geht einkaufen oder sie geht nach Hause. She's going shopping or she's going home. The clause separation rule also applies if you interrupt a clause and insert something that is not part of the clause. This can be anything from a single word to a whole sentence. The inserted part needs to be separated by commas. For example, Ich habe das Video das du mir geschickt hast, gesehen. I saw the video that you sent me. Mein Nachbar, der alte Mann, hört seine Klingel nicht. My neighbor, that old man, doesn't hear his doorbell. Deine Schuhe, das wollte ich dir schon die ganze Zeit sagen, sind auf. Your shoes, I meant to tell you that for quite some time, are untied. If you're talking and you squeeze in a thought that suddenly came up, you can also use dashes instead of commas, which emphasizes that it's an additional thought. That's why we call a dash Gedankenstrich in German, literally thought stroke or thought line. But that's a different topic. The second rule is enumeration. So, if you make a list of nouns, adjectives, adverbs or verbs, the listed words are separated by commas. Here again, UND and ODER replace the comma. They are usually used for the last point of the list. For example, Er kauft einen Computer, eine Maus und eine Tastatur. He's buying a computer, a mouse and a keyboard. Sie ist hübsch, klug und freundlich. She's pretty, smart and friendly. Er klettert, springt, schwimmt und läuft. He climbs, jumps, swims and runs. The third rule is when you have something in the beginning of the sentence that is not part of the first clause. This can be an interjection, 
So a word that expresses some kind of emotion or it can be a name to address someone or a greeting. Basically anything that isn't part of the first clause. For example, Hallo, wie geht's? Hello, how are you? Herr Müller, ich habe eine Frage. Mr. Miller, I have a question. Sarah, hast du morgen Zeit? Sarah, do you have time tomorrow? Ja, das ist super. Yes, that's great. Ach, das wusste ich gar nicht. Huh, I didn't know that at all. Oh, das ist ja schrecklich. Oh, that's just terrible. You can also add something to the end of the sentence, like an example or a specification, and it will also be separated by a comma. Typical phrases to start those are zum Beispiel, for example, das heißt, that means, nämlich, namely, wie, like, und zwar, in fact. For example, ich möchte gerne Europa bereisen, zum Beispiel nach Italien oder Spanien. I would like to travel to Europe, for example to Italy or Spain. Wir haben nur noch 50 Euro, das heißt nicht genug für das Konzert. We only have 50 euros left, that means not enough for the concert. Er ist schon alt, nämlich 90 Jahre. He's already old, namely 90 years. Wir brauchen ein Fahrzeug, wie ein Bus oder ein großes Auto. We need a vehicle, like a bus or a big car. Ich habe Obst gekauft, und zwar Bananen und Äpfel. I have bought fruits, in fact, bananas and apples. Let's look at what we've learned. There are three main rules for putting commas. Put commas in between main clauses, subclauses and infinitives with zu. The comma comes before the conjunction. The conjunctions und and oder do not come with a comma. If you interrupt a clause to insert something else, you also need to put commas before and after it. Number two. If you list things, you separate the words or phrases by comma. You can enumerate anything from words to phrases to whole sentences. Number three. Additions before and after a clause need a comma. If they don't belong to the clause, they count as a clause on their own, such as ja, nein, interjections, greetings, names, examples, specifications. The latter are usually started with something like zum Beispiel, das heißt, nämlich, wie, und zwar. Before I close, I want to mention two more situational things about commas. First of all, if you give a place and date in an official way, often seen in contracts or under artwork, you separate them using commas like this. Düsseldorf, den 30. April 2018. Berlin, 1998. Secondly, if you use decimal numbers in German, you use a comma, not a point. For example, 15,5%, 1,5 kg, 4,50 Euro. Alright, that's all about commas. Even though there are more commas in German than in English, I think the rules are very simple and logical. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below and vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit.